Uh, today I am um, going to talk to you mainly about um, how I approached my answer writing uh, because I got around 494 uh, marks in my uh, GS papers and a lot of it according to me uh, was possible also due to a lot of answer writing practice and building content uh, geared to answer writing practice as well. So um, the only thing that I'm, I can do is share how I did it if certain things you feel you can implement in your own strategy and you can sort of make it your own because I also learned a lot from say toppers copies before me and how they implemented stuff so if things you think uh, can be implementable in your own strategy do that if you think uh, it's not something that you would want to ape completely uh, think about that as well because not everything works for everyone so I'm going to say all of that with this caveat and um, um, Anything else, if you want to ask me towards the end of the presentation, you can do. And uh, yeah, I think I'll just jump straight into it. So um, answer writing, I think, uh, is a very, very important part of the mains examination specifically, because however much you read and however much you sort of um, learn new things and go through a lot of content, actually uh, using that content within that limited time period of three hours is very very challenging also in the say if it's a 10 marker so in those two pages making sure that you're writing an introduction body and conclusion and the right content in the limited sort of uh, time and the words that you have so a lot of practice and sort of strategy i think can be used so all of that i think you need to do before your mains examination how many of you are giving the 2022 um, mains examination is any okay okay fine so i think some of you can in the two months that are left to you certain things you can try to implement for others who are not I think you can start from now on also in terms of be even before the mains preparation before the prelims preparation you have this time right now so try to inculcate and improve that answer writing something which I did as well much before the time between the prelims and mains because answer writing is something that you know you when I started answer writing my answers are also not good um, there was a lot of content issues a lot of time issues but if you sort of try to learn from the answers that you've written, analyze them, uh, learn from the feedback and improve, that can help in the long run. So I'll just uh, go straight into it. Um, so what are the basics of answer writing? And these are th some things that I thought were important. First is understanding the um, demand of the question. So one, I think half your work is done if you're answering what is being asked of you. Because sometimes what happens is that you know, there's a certain question, you just focus on one keyword which is mentioned there and start writing about that because that's all you know. That won't fetch you marks. And this is something that happens initially when we don't have that content and we haven't read that much. So we just jump to things that we already know and we start writing them irrespective of what the question is asking. And if you look at how the questions are being asked in the previous a few years, try to, even if there's something that you don't know, try to shape what you know according to what is being answered. So I think I'll... I'll try to show a few examples also where, you know, there's certain question in the first half which is answer asked and second is how do you think, you know, you try to mitigate this using this case or using uh, the guidelines in this particular say WHO or NDMA. Even if you don't know the guidelines, make sure that you use that heading and through that write what you know. So you're at least attempting to answer the question. And uh, the most that can happen is, you know, you won't get marks for it. But at least if you completely don't mention that or try to answer the question, you won't get any marks. So make sure that you understand what is being asked and answer, try to answer that only rather than just, you know, randomly saying stuff. And make sure the answer is coherent in a way. So that coherence can come by using the words in the question. Uh, it should not seem to the examiner that, you know, you're not answering it or there's no flow in the answer. So coherence and trying to answer the question in the way, in the words that it's asked is something uh, that I think is very, very important. And if you manage to do just that in all the 20 questions, half of your work, maybe not half, but a lot of, of your work will be done. Secondly is content. You can't write good answers without good content. So you can't just, so I've seen sometimes people, what they do is they do a lot of answer writing practice. They come and, you know, write answers every day and say that, you know, we're not improving that much. You can't improve your answers if you don't have good content what you're writing on. So while you're doing answer writing practice, 
also work on the content use your model answers which are being given to you if for example if you're going through the mgp or use other stoppers copies or use the newspaper use the other material that you're reading go back to the material so this is something that i used to do i used to build a uh, sometimes content based on the newspaper say certain examples for gs4 if i find certain examples i'll just write it down in um, in my ethics copy so i had copies for gs1 2 3 and 4 so any uh, sort of say some new cyber attack has happened i used to go to my gs3 and write it under the security heading and when i was writing say a question on cyber security in my uh, mgp or uh, otherwise on my previous question papers i used to go back to the notes and add that there and even after you've done an answer writing uh, do spend some extra time go back to the content try to look for more content if you feel that that answer is not good enough so building content is very important for certain things like internal security all of that you you can already prepare certain templates prepare uh, two three pages notes for clear cut topics in the syllabus um so once you have that content ready you've understood what the question is asking a uh, structuring becomes very important and structuring i think um i think i wrote down a few things yeah so structuring uh, can be of two types right so structuring is first is content based structuring and the second is spatial structuring so firstly the structuring in terms of introduction body and conclusion that can usually be followed i try to usually follow it there are certain questions where you know you're running out of time so you'll just write a one line conclusion or um, sometimes you can you know directly jump into the question if you have very less time at the end but try to have some sort of introduction two three lines which introduces it then a body which will contain a lot of points in terms of actually answering the question and a conclusion which can be forward looking which can include a quote which can sort of uh, include sdg goals or any sort of uh, important terms so in terms of that you can have a structuring second is content based structuring in terms of how what the question is asking so sometimes there are three parts to the question or two parts to the question to understand those two and three parts start with an introduction use a subheading um, answer the first part of the question use a subheading answer the second part of the question what that structuring uh, in terms of content structuring helps you to do is it helps you also to make more points and think in those lines sometimes when you're just writing without any headings you just get into the flow you forget what was asked but if you tell yourself you know one page i'll devote to the first half of the question second page i'll devote that and you write those headings you can also think of more points right so the first is content based structuring second is spatial structuring in terms of how to make the answer look better so um first is obviously underlining uh don't underline randomly i've seen people underline the most random things because if you underline the things uh that are important the examiner looks i think at least you can assume that he would look at them rather than the other stuff so underline the important stuff the things that you think are crucial to the answer second is um spatial structuring in terms of say margins so if you're starting your subheading from here if you start your points from here it looks a little neat even if your answer writing is not, your writing is not that good handwriting is not that good this spatial structuring makes it look a little better and you know you can read the answers better use sort of points uh, again just as sir was saying i used to uh, make examples whenever whenever i used to use an example to differentiate it from the points on 1 2 3 which i used circles for i used a triangle to set it apart so these things you can come up with yourselves in terms of how to spatially structure the answer leaving margins where to start the next point then then the sub sub parts and all of that right so this was the um, structuring uh, based thing fourth is speed and the speed and content thing you need to always uh, maintain a balance because sometimes what happens is that you can't complete the paper at all and then there's no point to the content you're writing two three answers first you answers beautiful handwriting beautiful content but then you're not attempting five questions at the end so it doesn't sort of get you those extra marks because you'll get those one two marks in the beginning but you'll uh, do away with the 15 markers at the end so make sure that you're um, practicing and practice really helps and not just in terms of say if you're writing a 3 hour test that's well and good make sure that you put those um, limits on yourself because there if you're for example attempting the paper at home there'll be no one standing on top of you and like saying that you know finish it uh, in in those 3 hours but you have to set those limits for yourself even in the final paper try to set time limits um, apart from the 3 hours as well so one hour may how many questions should be done or was something that i used to do was so for example if i said 7 minutes for one question the early ones then if if i am completing say the first question by 8 minutes 
uh, then I used to make sure that this next question I'll complete in six minutes. So that it doesn't carry on for that long. If you're, say, eight minutes, then the other, another one, eight minutes as well, third one, eight minutes as well, then for the end, you have very little time. So if you're taking more time for one, take less time for the second one. So those sort of things and you need to come up with and start practicing uh, in, in, in um, a fixed environment. If you can't attempt the full length paper, make sure that you attempt three questions and you know complete it in seven minutes each or six minutes each, respectively. So work on speed. And if you have all of these ready, I think more or less uh, the structure of the paper is done to get those extra marks. If, for example, you've already given your attempt, you haven't got enough marks, how to make your answer better if you've sort of worked on all these four things already, that, that is where the embellishments sort of fetch you the extra marks. So embellishments can be in terms of, say, diagrams, they can be flowcharts, they can be maps, say, in geography, you can sort of make boxes, arrows, all of that. Um, also embellishments in terms of something that I use, say, for GS4, uh, certain examples, certain quotes, uh, then certain keywords also. So um, I used to uh, prepare a, a list of for things that I could use in terms of keywords like, you know, um, Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas, or New India, or $5 trillion economy, which you can sort of put anywhere if you can't think of anything else. So these are certain things that you can uh, think of and prepare a ready collection yourself, because these things, at, during the examination time, you have absolutely no time to think. You look at the question, you answer, uh, whatever has been literally, f um, you know, burnt into your head. O those are the only things you remember at that time. You can't remember things which you've just cursorily read once. So you need to do this homework before you enter the examination hall. And these things in terms of preparing a set of examples, revising it multiple times. I also sort of uh, made a list of 10 Padma Shri awardees, um, 10, 15 who were uh, sort of important and in various different fields. So I used them across uh, my four papers, wherever I could use them. So keep looking out for such material, uh, col keep collecting it for those who are, say, not giving uh, the mains this time. Start doing it from now on only because it won't happen in a day. For those who are giving it, uh, if you have a ready collection of quotes, if you have a ready collection of whatever material you have, just try to revise it and try to use these as embellishments. So for GS2, you have committees. For um, GS1, again, um, society, you can have certain examples, GS2 committees or say articles, parts of the constitution. So for each paper, the demand is a little different, but these embellishments can sort of help you uh, make your answer prettier, better, all of that. Right? And um, again, an analysis, practice improvement, just, just keep on writing won't help. On all these parameters, when you write a paper, when you've uh, completed, a f for example, a test paper or your own paper, go back. Just don't go to the next one without thinking. Go back, analyze it, look at each question, think how it uh, could have been made better. So something which I used to do was, even if I got, say, good marks or good uh, uh, remarks in a paper, I used to look at as to how it could have been made better, what could have been a better introduction, what could have been an example that was in my notes which I did not use. So I used to write that in the margin. Going back to it, next time making sure that if that uh, question comes, I will uh, um, use it. So I did not have a revision strategy per se. So sometimes what thing people do is they, you know, revise it, uh, have a revision strategy. Ki ek hafte mein ek revise karungi, fir ek mein karungi, fir my revision practice was my answer writing only. I used to actually spend time with the answers, go back to it. And that way it like it gets you sort of imbibe it more when you're writing it, using it rather than just uh, revising it per se for my means. Um, yeah, and even if you don't know the answers to certain questions, this is something which has happened, which happens say in GS3 this time, try to use whatever knowledge you have and answer it in the best possible way with confidence. Because at that point, everyone is on the same platform as you. If you don't know, it's likely that more than half the people also won't know. So just tell yourself that the most I can do is give my best at that point. So try to uh, answer with confidence. This is something that I used in my GS3 paper this time because there were a lot of questions about blue LEDs, S400, which no one knew about. But whatever limited knowledge I had, I tried to complete like all the pages that had been given to me with some sort of like uh, reasonable content, not just random content, with whatever I knew and implementing it and kind of using my knowledge of LEDs, say, in blue LEDs and trying to just sort of put those things in that way. So this is something that you can do. 